It's your daily dose of Donna. Happy Monday. Happy Eclipse Day. Did you guys realize that I scheduled Daily Dose of Donna, my live show, literally during the eclipse? So if you're over here watching me instead of the eclipse, you guys count for two views. Welcome to the show. It is Monday, April 8th. I missed you guys last Friday. I had a, I had a wonderful uh, weekend out of town. If you want to see more about that, I talked all about it on Patreon. I released a vlog of my weekend away with my kids and my husband and La Quinta. We had so much fun. That is all over on Patreon. But I have a really big show today and I don't want to keep you guys waiting at all. We have an incredible two people, guests coming from Vanderpump Villa, literally right off the villa. They're going to join us in just a moment. We're also going to talk about how Tori Spelling's divorce really uh, had something to do with a baked potato. I'm not even making that up. We'll talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion part two and Tamara and Shannon fighting in London, plus more on today's Daily Dose of Donna. I already love the comments that are coming in. Divorce by Potato, starring Tori Spelling and Dean McDermott. I love it. Laura's watching the eclipse on her patio with all the dosers and a cocktail. I mean, why aren't we doing a daily dose of Donna party, an eclipse party right now? I'm really, really uh, sad about this moment. I really feel like I missed the boat. I guess we'll have to wait until 2079 for the next one. Um, but before we get into our guest today, I have, the, well, just to announce, I have Gabriella and Steven from Vander, Vanderpump Villa. They're the, the event coordinators. I'm so excited to talk to them all about what really went down because did you guys watch episode four last night? Before we get into it, I have to shout out one of my sponsors for today's Daily Dose, and that is One Skin. There is nothing like feeling confident in your own skin. That's why I have to tell you about today's sponsor, One skin. Their products make it easy to keep your skin healthy while looking and feeling your best. No complicated routine, no multiple step protocols, just simple scientifically validated solutions. So One Skin has this proprietary OS01 peptide. I'm all about science, which is why I'm not watching the eclipse, so I guess I'm not really all about science, but it's the first ingredient proven to switch off the aging cells that cause lines, wrinkles, and thinning skin. If you use my code daily dose, that's one word, daily dose at oneskin.co, you'll get 15% off your first purchase. So try one skin and enjoy younger, healthier skin without all the extra steps. All right. Are you guys ready to bring on our guests? Make sure to jump in the comments and let them know what kind of questions you have all about Vanderpump Villa. We have Steven Alsvig and Gabriella Sannon. Welcome, you guys. Hello. Well, for having us. Okay, yeah, Steven, thank you for having us. Of course, Steven is in Vegas and Gabriella is in Miami. And we're all experiencing this eclipse in real time. How, how does it look out we, where you guys are? We should have had a party. I, like you what? Are the I should be there. <laughs> I'm also apparently not into science because I am in my four wall secluded room. I was watching Cinderella before this. So <laughs> your room looks very dark, Stephen. I don't know if you have a window in that room. I do. I do. It's 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 over there. It's, oh, it's the vibe. It's very hidden. Um, Gabriella is more living her La Vida Loca. She's outside. I see like the beautiful palm trees going on. Now, let me ask I you guys a question. Like yeah, it's Miami life. And I'm here in LA and I just have a fake wall behind me of trees. So it's kind of like I'm a little bit in Miami. So tell right. me really fast uh, a little bit about where you guys are right now and why you guys live where you do, what you're doing. Steven just said that he just woke up. I'm going to I'm gonna uh, throw you under the bus, Steven. Why did you well, just wake up? Well, I, I said I was sleepy. I didn't just wake up. I've been up since 5 a.m. because I just don't sleep. But I closed oh. up my job last night. I do work full time here in Las Vegas. I work at a brand new venue uh, called Play Playground. It's an adult playground, 21 and over, drinks, life-size board games. But it's busy. It's hectic. I'm not a trophy husband yet, so I got to make my own money. <laughs> and that was one of your, that's one of your goals is to become a trophy husband. It's going to happen, obviously. Wait, I need to know more about this playground life-size, like you're playing Sorry, Monopoly. Oh, I mean, what's happening? 
Yes, life size uh, operation, life size, uh, sorry, life size, just everything. It's not an arcade. It's meant to make adults feel like they're children again. Like there's a giant slide that we encourage you to have a drink and go down. We have one of those like things where you jump from a trampoline into a Velcro wall. It's super cool. I want to come. A brand new <laughs> it's a brand new concept. Like we're a startup company. It's a brand new concept. I work very closely with the owners, the director of operations. It's like a small knit management team, but it's been popping since we've gotten back from France. It's all I've seen advertised across Vegas. So I was like, I have to work there. And Where know, is it exactly in Vegas? It's in the Luxor. And that's another reason I'm so sleepy is I live 24 miles away from the Strip. So I commute. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And the Luxor. The last time I was in the Luxor, oh, this was a, that was a fun weekend. Um, <laughs> and then Gabriella, you live in Miami. I do. I do. I do events and marketing at a restaurant in South Beach called Biblos Miami. Um, nice. I'm actually supposed to be at work at two, but I'm like, guys, I'm busy. <laughs> this is, you have a work event and also you should not be outside during the eclipse. We have to protect ourselves. Right? Like why, why, why would I work right now? No, no, no. But no, I love it. I, I love what I do. Um, it's really enjoyable, you know, bringing people together, putting on events. I'm really food and bringing people together is everything and more that I love. So it's just, it's really enjoyable. It really okay, is. Okay. So we have to talk about Vanderpump Villa because I know we don't have that much time. So you got to get to work. Um, but Vanderpump Villa is my new favorite show. I've talked about this now. Um, I've watched a bunch of the episodes, but then I rewatched, like I got some screeners a while ago, but then I'm watching live with everyone else. And last night's episode four just announced itself. So, or just uh, premiered. Now, if you haven't watched Vanderpump Villa out there and you guys are waiting to like get the sign from, you know, well, there's an eclipse right now. So that's the sign. You have to watch it. And Vanderpump Villa basically takes you to the most gorgeous location in the south of France. What specific area is it? It's so near Carcassonne. It is, it's, um, so it's, it's southwest and it's like an hour from Toulouse which is kind okay. of the main city in that area. Yeah, and Carcassonne is just like a really, really small, small town. It's gorgeous. It's like ancient looking. A it's, fortified it's city. Very, yeah. yeah. It looks beautiful. And this villa yeah. is gorgeous that I would imagine, I mean, you guys tell me. So did Lisa just kind of rent it out and call it her own thing for the production? Is that how it works? Because it's, it's like a functioning place separate from Lisa, right? It is a functioning place. She she did rent it out only because she's testing to see if this is what she wants to do permanently moving forward. She knows that this is one day she wants to get back to her roots of being in Europe, having a chateau, having a staff. We were kind of her first trial run into experimenting with, is this what we're moving forward with? I love that. Yeah, and she was definitely so passionate about it. I mean, think about the whole production it took to to relocate there, do this pop-up renovate it i mean she had architectural digest come in and do a piece on that chateau and she did it up like the difference in the space it was it's really amazing everything she did and all the work she put in for it so she did some major renovating before you guys actually started the season it wasn't just right. decor it was no. not just decor no. there were walls put up there was painting there were things taken down there was gardening landscaping like it's we saw the before and after pictures and it's night and day it's like wow. it's more than just it's bouquets of flowers. Oh my world. god, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's yeah. before and that's the after. I love it so much. So what about tell me tell me a little bit about the process. So obviously Stephen from what I've read and what I saw, you've worked with Lisa before in the past over at Vanderpump um, Cocktail Garden, correct? Vanderpump Cocktail Garden and Vanderpump Opry. So how did how did you jump into the show? Did she specifically kind of seek you out or did you have to apply or anything like that? So yeah, I opened up, uh, I was one of the first, I was the first major D at Vanderpump Cocktail Garden in 2019. I was a super fan of Vanderpump Rules. I was ready to move to Texas at the time. Um, but then they announced Vanderpump and I was like, okay, I got to at least attempt to work there. And, you know, I put it out in the universe. It happened. I got the job by messaging Pandora and she was like, let, let me see, this is where you uh, do your interviews. This is where you uh, apply. She sent me the link. Got the job, was there for a couple of years. Then we opened up Vanderpump Paris. I was a manager there. And as we heard, I made a snarky remark 
Now, to set the rumors straight, I never bullied my staff. Um, I did not go off on management like, you know, other cast members or staff of Lisa's in the past have done. Um, I made an innuendo regarding the Eiffel Tower because I do have daddies in my life. And it was overheard by another employee and it was reported to HR. And I admit to my fault, I didn't hide it. I didn't lie about it, but you know, Caesars is a corporate entity. So there are stricter guidelines. It wasn't a mom and pop show. And so all the hard work I put into my career there was gone because of one comment regarding the Eiffel Tower. That's why I'm no longer there. I left, I gave up my dreams of ever being on reality years ago. Um, I was ready to move on and grow my career in other venues. And then last year they announced Vanderpump Villa. I wasn't gonna apply because I've always looked at myself as dad bod, not what she's looking for, not the, the type of person she wants on TV, um, very cliche gay voice. So when I got the call the day the announcement was dropped from Lisa herself, she FaceTimed me while looking for the Chateau in France and said, Steven, you did such amazing work for me in Las Vegas. I want you to be a part of this project. I'll put you in touch with the production team. I'd need you to audition. Like it was very, very validating for all the hard work I did do, um, not mm. just there, but in my entire life to lead up to that moment of like, wow, like I don't have to have the rock hard abs. I don't have to, you know, put on a show of lap dances and all that stuff to, to be seen by someone like Lisa. Wow, what a story. I mean, I'm surprised actually. I didn't realize that like Caesars can control essentially who works at an establishment within Caesars. Like you would think that they would say, hey, I'm going to leave it up to the land, the manager of that shop or of that restaurant. Well, to also clarify on that, I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. Lisa is very hands on on all of her venues as far as the aesthetics, the menus, how it's supposed to be. Every time she's in town, she's working in there. But the way the contracts work in Vegas for entities like MGM and Caesars is you're basically renting the space, but the employment goes through them and the union. So it's not even mm. just Caesars HR. It's the culinary union here in Las Vegas that we're dealing with, mm. which is probably why there's never going to be a Vanderpump Rules Las Vegas edition, because Lisa can't just go in and control the staff. We're controlled by the union and Caesars HR. Wow. That's like so much that I guess people don't even think about. But that's so nice that she was able to look past that. I mean, listen, one thing I think we can – know about Lisa from watching years and years of Vanderpump Rules and you guys are fans of the show. Well, I don't know about you yet, Gab Gabriella, but at least even you said you were a diehard fan. She has given people chances after chances after chances. Um, maybe not Kristen Doty, but she gave <laughs> everyone else lots of chances on those shows, especially like James and Jax specifically. So this is interesting. So she had you in mind to come in and to audition. So let me jump over to Gabriella. What about you? How did you get involved with Vanderpump Villa? Someone just reached out to me on Instagram. <laughs> and Like in the casting like, department? Yeah, yeah. They were like, are you interested? His name is Mike Rose. And he's like, are you interested in reality TV? And I'm like, hmm, yeah. I mean, all my friends are always like, you belong on reality TV. You have the personality, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'll see and then it presented itself and it's so crazy i tell everyone this the beginning of the year in january i was telling my friends i belong in the south of france i don't know what it is it's the men it's the boys it's the food i say it every time manifesting that for me for myself and then in june they reach out to me with this he calls me tells me this show is taking place in the south of france i know you do events tell me a little bit about yourself and from there it just went up oh, i mean interview oh, after wow. interview the whole summer I was doing this process and I'm thinking to myself, I had friends on Love Island and people that have done castings before and they haven't gotten it. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to get it, but whatever, let's go along for the ride. Let's, let's, let's be positive and let's just talk about things as if I'm going. Yeah. Like I live my life. Like I'm going like, sorry guys, I'll be taking leave for six weeks. I'll be gone whatever, like at work. Um, and they're like, yeah, whatever, Gabriella, sure. And, and it works behold, out. I meet Lisa in LA for my final interview and the casting director walks into the room. I'll never forget this. And she goes, so Gabriella, I'll see you in France. And I'm like, wait, what? That was the <laughs> best line ever is to hear, you're going to France. You oh guys, my God. That's I was over the moon. Yeah. They told you in the room too. Yeah. I mean, she, and she was like, I've been working oh, here for a really long time and no one and no one has ever found out this early and i'm like no way oh my god this is this is insane and i wonder I, I just, no keep go going ahead. 
Well, I you was saying I, I really, I really connected with Lisa and I think just the energy really aligned for us and just in terms of, okay, I see this girl and I see what she wants to do and I see that potential and obviously everything she's done is everything I'd want to emulate myself. So we just, we connected very well, I feel. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to be like, I, I have to say to be recognized if you're in the hospitality industry and mm -hmm. Lisa Vanderpump recognizes you as like someone that she wants to represent her, that is a right. really, really big accolade. It's a validation of not only your personality and kind of who you are, but also your work ethic. And I'm sure they speak to people that know you or references. I mean, I'm sure with these days because- right. But the, the question that I have, so let's get into the show. So you guys get the call that you're going to France. Stephen eventually does. I don't know when Stephen finds out. The next morning. Yeah? The very next morning. I, it was like 8 a.m. I get a text from the producers. They're like, we don't care what you look like. We don't care what you're wearing. Get on this right now. Get on the Zoom call. And I get on it. Yeah. And the first thing that pops up is Lisa's face going, Stephen, you're going to France. <laughs> this is a you guys, this is amazing. This is like, Aww. this is someone's dream. So you guys get how long to know, you know, how long to give your, your life an update that you're going over to France, just like right away. You had to go one week, one week. It was like five, actually Turn five around. days. So when you get to Vanderpump Villa for the first time, that's when you meet the rest of the, the peeps, right? I can't imagine that you, or maybe you're meeting them a little bit before. No. Well, me, yes. Um, cause I, oh, because I because you brought Marciano and Hannah. That's right. Oh, and Hannah, obviously. Okay, we're gonna get into that That's in right. a second. But other than that, you're meeting everyone the day that production starts filming. Right. Yeah. Yep. Wow. I and was so sad they didn't show that actually. The the car ride going up to the chateau, meeting Lisa for the first time in France, like introducing yourself of who you are and what you're doing. Like I was like, oh, they didn't show that. Yeah, I'm sure they don't show so much footage that you guys have. Yeah. So you so you go over there, you meet everyone, and immediately, what are your thoughts about this? Are you like, this is going to be incredible, or this is a shit show waiting to happen? Like, what are your thoughts I, about everyone? I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, we are, I dropped my hair pen. I'm like, we are in for something real interesting right now. That was, my, that was my initial, yeah, for sure. Did you think like, oh, these people are very good looking or they're kind of hot messes? A little, a little bit, bit of about. everything. <laughs> well, th if you yeah. if you look at the cast, right, it's so it's so diverse, not only in in nationality and ethnicity, but but in personalities, in work ethic, in our professionalism, in the way we speak, the way we act, our energies. So it like the second I was like, this is, this is an eclectic bunch. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, that's my word for the whole, for the whole experience and the cast. Steven, oh what, what about you? I will say, okay. So Gabriella was the first person I met actually upon meeting Gabriella and I were put in a van together as we drive up to the Chateau. And I will say that was one of the most magical experiences with seeing her face light up as we're going up to the Chateau. <laughs> we talk about this memory very often because as we're going up, it's a gravel paved way. And she's wearing these heels. So I'm like telling her, I'm directing her. I'm like, I'm going to step out of the car first. You're going to grab my arm and then I'm going to close the door behind us. Do not step ahead of me until you take my arm again and we walk to Lisa because this is not the moment for you to fall on the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is my guy. Like, this is my man. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, but my God. Upon meeting the rest of the staff, like the first night, I think we were all just so optimistic because everybody was just like, you see Eric for the first time, he's like, oh my God, he's a Disney prince. He's oh. going to be perfect. You see Chef Anthony, so he's got these piercing blue eyes and you're like, who is he? Hold me. And then you see all these bombshell girls in their tight little dresses. It's like, oh, of course, Lisa picked the hottest of the hot. So it was very, very exciting. First impression was just like everybody's babes. Everybody deserves to be here. But boy, did that change within, I would say, like an hour or two, just some alcohol mixed up in there. Some comments made at dinner. And I was just like, oh, this is this is going to be an interesting ride. Yeah, no, there's the the first episode. I was thinking the same. I was like, I'm sorry. Like, what world did we jump into with the hottest people I've ever seen? Because I watch a lot of these <laughs> reality shows, you know, and I know that it's not uh, a Bravo show, but it reminds me a little bit of Below Deck in the sense that each week or each episode, you have a new charter guest. So it's similar. And I love that it's done that way because you're not stuck with the same guest the entire time. You get to kind of experience all these different 
vibes and energies. But the first episode, right after everyone kind of gets introduced to each other, they're given drinks, lots of drinks. And we immediately see some behavior, especially from Marciano. Marciano and Hannah's dynamic, I would say, is the most like it's kind of like the biggest, one of the bigger storylines, at least in those, those first few episodes. What were your feelings since you brought them, Stephen? If you guys don't know, Marciano, he's a very good looking guy, but definitely, hmm, how would you describe him? I mean, he describes himself this way and the internet's following suit. He is Jax 2.0. Yep. A hundred percent. I will say, I need to clarify this as well, because even the staff was a little confused. I was always asked, like, how can you be friends with someone like this? Now, mind you, I'm not saying I'm not friends with him at this point now, but at that point, I suggested him as my server at the venue that I visit frequently here in Las Vegas, Jing, because he's been my server for years. I've only ever seen him as a server. We were Instagram friends, and something he was always good at is every time I'd go in, he greeted my table with Dr. Pepper. He knew my allergies were avocado. I like tequila. And he always knew what things to ask about my life. Like, oh, you were a Vanderpump. Now you're a super freako, but you're still posting a lot of Vanderpump. Do you still work with them on the side? Or no, I'm just like a big supporter. He just, he knew how to have a conversation. He knew his steps of service. He had the look. And I, when I would bring new people in, they were always like, Steven, he's so gay. He's so into you. Why aren't you after that? I'm like, well, first off, he's straight. And second off, he's not my type, but he's a great server. So suggested him and I didn't really know Hannah before the show. She had dropped food off at my table before, so I've seen her in passing. So when Lisa reached out to me and said, hey, Steven, I need one more female server. Who do you know? I suggested two friends. I asked Marciano for two friends. He suggested Hannah to me. I suggested Hannah to Lisa. And that's kind of how we all got there. Listen, number one, no, no, like no one's mad at you or shocked by it. It's, it makes the show so good. Like I'm glad he's there. I think that if everyone, and we'll get into Eric in a second, but I think that if these personalities are just good at what they do, but nothing else, it's not good TV. We need to see that like douchebag behavior come out. That's the reason why people love Vanderpump Rules because of the Jax and all of those kind of people. And Hannah, I mean, Hannah has a little bit of a, a, a kind of um, sassy side, I should say, with Priscilla in those first couple episodes, too. I do want to, like, actually comment on that a little bit. I've seen a lot of, like, comments of, like, insecurity and whatnot. And I will say something that everyone needs to understand because I lived through this a few years ago. I was in a three and a half year relationship where I was cheated on repeatedly. We all like to think and say, oh, if I were this person in their shoes, I would end it then and there. I'd kick them out. I'd do that. But you really don't know how you're going to react until you're in it. And sometimes it's just easier to give in and kind of live with it until you get to that moment where you're like, no, I need to put myself first. And it doesn't mean you're going to stop loving that person. It just means you're going to love yourself more. So I don't think that there's an insecurity regarding that whole situation. I think it's all about just getting to that point of finding the importance of being happy on your own. Did you guys realize that Stephen is also auditioning for the next uh, season of Dr. Phil? I mean, Stephen, <laughs> you are like a, you are you shouldn't just be working in the hospitality industry. You should write a book. That was like so profound. I actually oh. almost switched my major to professional writing. So that's funny you say that. There you go. Wait, I Gabriella, what were your thoughts on Marciano and Hannah's dynamic? Because you didn't know them at all. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely um, not the type of people I typically surround myself with. I'm very, I'm more of a calm, easygoing presence and a mediator and just to keep things leveled out. Now, I completely understand people like them. I know, you know, it, it, it comes down to just how you were brought up, the environment you were in, your experiences and to each his own, you know, very intense very powerful personalities. Um, and, you know, I just, I try my best not to engage as much, not to let that negativity and that energy affect what my overall end game was going into the Chateau. Um, I'll let them have their thing. Like, sure. I mean, I'm just going to keep it over there. It's, it's just not, it's not my vibe, but you yeah. Know. I feel like you both, I don't know if this is on purpose or and maybe we just haven't seen a lot, but you both don't get too involved in all the crazy drama. Steven, maybe a little more, a little more. Uh, you, I think that you got to just wait and see. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. one of those, that's one of those things where we're still at the beginning of the season. Um, and my drama is actually all specifically related to job performance. Mm. Um, 
I take my job very seriously. I've already lost my job with the Vanderpump brand once and I'm not going to let that happen again. And I think, Ella. yeah, I think definitely um, between Steven and I, we, you know, we are filming a show. Yes, of course. But at the end of the day, we are hosting guests. And not only is this Lisa's name, but this is my name. This is Steven's yeah. name. And if people are going to be, you know, somewhat loose and, and belligerent or not really thinking about, you know, end game, there has to be a balance. Totally. Right? Like, totally. of course, there's time, like, the first episode where I'm like, damn, like, I want to get hammered right now. Like, what the heck? You know what I mean? But I'm like, no, because I already know this man's drinking. I already know she's drinking. Like, I know everyone's slinging shots. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a second and just keep that equilibrium because who else? You know, it's so it's so smart that you do that, because at the end of the day, you're right. Not only is Lisa's name on this and the show and its whole like that whole world. At the end of the day, you're still in this business and this is a real job for you. Now, was everyone that was hired on Vanderpump Villa like this is literally what they do for a living? I mean, I know with, you know, Grace and Emily, they're the housekeepers and I from what I'm getting, this is something that they're just taking a job just to kind of get into this business in the hospitality world, right? Well, Grace, Grace is actually a housekeeper. Okay. And um, Emily has done housekeeping and things like that, but she, Emily's done everything. She does everything, you know? So, but that's Grace's um, primary job. I love that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, they're so, I love the dynamics of having, you know, people that are really, Grace's whole storyline basically about how this is something that she really wants to work hard and her her struggles through the years. Like this is so needed, that vulnerable side, that real side on a reality show. I feel like instead of just always focusing on like the hot people that party too much, you know, because we have that. We have the conflict. We have the telly. We have the uh, Marciano and Eric and stuff. But the Grace story is such an important one to be told. And I really love that. Yeah. Did you it did it? Did, did you, we want? No. Did you guys feel? Let's talk about Eric. Let's talk about manager Eric. Now, Eric, you just said when you described him, Stephen, Gabriella was like, "Yeah, so hot." So I was like, "So hot." First look. impression. First impression. Okay. Once that Incredibly. mouth opened, I said. <laughs> he was that. he is very good looking very true but by episode three i think is when we fart, when we see him kind of like come out of his shell and decide to become everyone's boss like and and take over lisa vanderpump and when he comes into that staff meeting and starts to talk down to everyone i immediately was like this is not good this does not work so was he really like that this was not like a push thing at the very beginning, I think all of us were just a little bit clouded and confused by that word manager. Yeah. She does clarify in episode one just a little bit. And I did an Instagram live earlier today, just watching the first five ep uh, minutes of episode four, where I clarified this again. We were all under the impression that he was a staff manager. But Lisa, again, clarifies for us later. No, you're all equals. You live together. No one is above anybody except for me. You answer to me and me alone. Eric was the chateau manager, which I wish they would have made it more like chateau keeper because he was supposed to be laying down rock, gardening, unclogging toilets, fixing broken windows, uh, bathing the donkeys. Like he was supposed to be managing the chateau to make sure that that after her renovations is staying put together. He was not supposed to be managing us. And even we were confused, like we were all guilty of it. He thought that was the case that he was managing us. We thought that was the case until it got to the point where Lisa saw that meeting and saw him overstepping and was like, no, no, no. And she would even tell me, Stephen, this is the job you want, really? Like, you want to be laying down rock and resetting all this stuff? I was like, no, I want to be managing the staff because that's what I do for a living. Yeah. So, wait, that's yeah, so interesting. That. He got hired to do something he didn't even really know what he was doing. So, he came in there like role playing. He's like, I'm in charge of you guys. And she's like, no, 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 just lay rock. That is yeah. amazing. And it was, it was so funny because, like, even even when the lines were blurred and we really thought he was managing the staff, I still would look at him like, huh? <laughs> like, who who do you think you are managing right now? Like, I'll tell you. You know what I mean? And I would just I would just allow him to just prance around and 
and do whatever he's doing. And me and Steven are just like, okay. (laughs) What about this whole drinking on the job thing? Because everyone keeps talking about like, you're not supposed to drink on the job. You're not supposed to drink on the job. But in every episode I've seen Marciano is drinking on the job and Eric as well. So like, is this something that it kind of depends on the guests in the moment? Is it because Lisa's not on like in the, like in the location? How is that allowed? I definitely allow myself to, um, I I, I hold myself to a higher standard because I work in Vegas. We're on the strip. It's a union environment. So any employee getting caught drinking on the job, it's immediate termination. But Marciano's venue or like venues that are more pop mom and pop shop, you're allowed to like have a drink with the guest. You're allowed to have a shot here and there. So like that wasn't the issue for me. Where it became an issue was like, I agree with Chef Anthony, when it became pouring bottles down your throat in the middle of service, when it became shot after shot after shot in one instance, that became an issue. That's where like the professionalism really needs to be like kicked up a notch and like, hey, should I be doing this? Like a shot with the guest every hour, fine. Um, a sip of a, a glass of wine, absolutely. But when it's the bottle being poured, eh. I have to say, I kind of agreed with Anthony in last night's episode. It was a bachelorette party. And he's like, you know, just because the word bachelorette party, it doesn't mean that now we're all of a sudden in the middle of Vegas. Like we're still at this beautiful villa. I did think it was a little weird that she brought her fiance. I'm going to be honest. Like that was a little strange to me, (laughs) but that's personal. I just feel like, and then the whole thing about having her friend, uh, this is the the bachelorette's Brett. friend. Right. Brett. Brett. Oh, Brett, don't be nasty. Don't be nasty. He would always say <laughs> that's his catchphrase. He he was trying, I think he was trying to like be discovered. No, he was he, trying to get in to every scene. He's cut through. Trying, believe me. Like, so we were pre-warned. You don't get to, like you said, you don't get to see everything that we did there because you're fitting six and a half weeks of 24 7 filming into 10 45 minute episodes so you're not going to see every detail but we were pre-warned that this group had a little dispute and the dispute was the fact that brett felt since this relationship started his friend kind of disappeared and he missed his friend so their drama circulated around brett and wasn't he like not invited to the wedding or something like that he wasn't and so like he wasn't oh, trying to get the camera time at all it was just that was that was their whole focus. The trip was basically about the bachelorette and the fact that there was some drama with Brett because he wasn't as close with his friend as he once was. You guys probably got so much like you got so into everyone's stories and every all the guests. Did you guys have um, some favorites? I know that you can't really like divulge stuff in future episodes, but were there some people that you feel like you loved and would want to keep in touch with from the show in terms of guests? And I still do. And you know, what's funny is um, JP and Lauren just moved in literally a five minute walk from me. So we're going to do, we're going to start doing tennis lessons, hopefully once a week, because JP is a professional tennis player and they're the sweetest. Me and Brett talk sometimes. I mean, (laughs) to be honest, you know, what's crazy is like, I hate, like, I can't stand the drama, but he was drama, but I loved it for some reason, right? (laughs) So so yeah, same, with his. same here yeah. actually though um jeremy and scott from group one i actually they like i said earlier when i felt like i didn't belong on reality tv because of the way i looked and the way i talked they were this gay couple that showed up in group one where i was like oh they're so pretty they're gonna be so mean to me and no they were so kind i built a really good relationship with them group two cena such a sweetheart he was the the one that drew the uh-huh. beautiful picture of lisa we Highland were crew. constantly texting. And then this last group, actually, ironically, it's Brett and I got really, really close. Who knew Brett was going to become the star of Vanderpump Villa? What about, <laughs> um, and, and I already mentioned to you guys that one of my clients, Robin Sheridan, she shows up in a later episode um, going there. And she told me, you know, just off the record that it was really such an amazing, cool experience. I mean, she couldn't tell me that much, obviously, but yeah. it must have been such a, fun experience for everyone else, like all the guests that got to come. But let's talk about like behind the scenes. What was it like? Obviously, Steven, you have a relationship with Lisa, but you know, Gabriella, were you intimidated around Lisa? Did she scare you a little bit or was she super, super easy to get along with? She was super easy to get along with. Um, I'm not often intimidated by people. It's more so that she inspired me and that I just wanted to, to soak up that energy and and her knowledge and and Lisa, she she has a way, and especially when she's in a space, is she won't say too much. 
but she'll say enough and you and you take that in you grasp it and then she does like a dramatic exit and you're like you just know what you're doing you know what i'm saying and and her and i had a few conversations um that were really nice but she definitely um she sees us Mm. and and she knows us and she's calculated in that way where she knows what you need to to feel good and to do your best um so she's just very god there's just so many words i can use to to describe her but she she's really she's just really a master at her craft and and what she's doing so it was more so that i just you know she's awesome she's an amazing woman i feel like there's definitely a maternal side of her which comes out a lot with um talking to different members of the staff that are going through that not just on this show on all of her shows that are going through you know trials and tribulations and we see it with her and telly in those couple of episodes at the beginning when telly gets into it with um was it marciano that she got into it with at the beginning Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. and and so i like that side of lisa but at the same time you know she's not going to be walked all over right you can tell that she really she lays down the law and people do follow her direction and she has such an incredible vision i mean clearly this place is gorgeous and she knows what she's doing obviously she's able to not only be in the business an, an amazing like restaurateur but as a producer and as like a show creator, that's a pretty huge thing. She's, she kind of knows how to do it. I have to say it. Yeah. She's, she's doing both, mm-hmm. which is, which is the most impressive. You really have to be like very versatile in, in that sense and, and flexible. Yeah. What about you? Steven? Steven? Well, for me, I think it's, it gets previewed at the end of episode three. You kind of see like coming up this season on Vanderpump Billy, you kind of see me breaking down and having a conversation with Lisa. Um, we do have a nice heart to heart, but there was a huge chip on my shoulder because of my past mm. um, working at Caesars and losing that opportunity. And like I said, the professionalism of it all. And then me also, I think I went in there only looking at Lisa as a boss. And I wanted to get to that point where everybody else felt that maternal love because I could see that she was trying to give it to me. But I just had that barrier where I wouldn't allow it because I was just like, no, I'm here to do this job. I'm here to perform. I'm here to make sure that your guests are happy. Um, That's all I care about. I'm going to make sure that I'm doing the very best of my abilities to get the job duties that you gave me done. And Mm -hmm. so it got to the point where it was just so overwhelming, not hard. It wasn't a hard job. It was so overwhelming seeing everybody else around me really getting to enjoy this relationship with release with Lisa and getting to enjoy the chateau and like let loose and have fun with the guests and with each other. And I felt like myself, and I will say actually, I felt like Chef Anthony, he was allowed to hundred percent stay in the kitchen, but like, I felt like the two of us, we were just holding ourselves so high up that we didn't exactly get to feel the fun factor that everybody else got to in it. Mm. It, it, it ate away at me. Yeah, interesting. I wonder if if there's going to be a season two, which I hope there is, and you guys get to go back, what do you think you would do differently? Well, because of that conversation with Lisa and because of a few conversations, and you'll see a few other dramatic things that happen with me and other cast members outside of Eric, um, Mm -hmm. I'm going to go in there with a different Oh, Gabriella just gave us a mm mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to go in there with a completely different mindset, not, you know, go and become like a mini Marciano and Eric where I'm partying like crazy with the guests, but I'm going to go in there and know like, no, you know what? You belong here. You can, you can breathe. You can relax. You can let your shoulders down. Um, So I think I would, if I had the opportunity to go back, you'd see a bit more of a fun side to me. That's so interesting. I mean, I like that from you, Steven. (laughs) You know, Steven, Steven, you've mentioned this a couple of times, how you kind of like, not not sure if you're the right look for reality TV or I don't know if I'm going to fit in or if I don't know this and this and that. Like, it's interesting because I see you as a really confident kind of fun personality. Like as someone that watches reality TV for a living and talks about it, I love your personality. And I love a couple of things that you've already said just in these first few episodes. And I can't wait to see you come out of your shell, I guess, a little bit more on the show. But I imagine that's just because you had that bad experience. It like it took away your confidence. It, it really did. It took my it took my confidence as far as like, even with my new job here at Play Playground, my management team is so amazing. And I'm I'm just so afraid to ask them for anything because I'm so used to like being reprimanded and so used to like the strict no's and the, oh, he's just asking too much. He's lazy. He wants to do this. And they're being so understanding, like with everything regarding even the show. They're like, if you need to do a season two, you go do it. We'll see you two months after. Like, 
they're so awesome and it just it's it's nice to finally be at a point in my life where I could just live, you know. Totally, totally. I hope you guys both come back for a second season because I'm assuming there will be one. It's too good, you guys. If you're a fan of shows like, honestly, Vanderpump rules in those first years. I mean, I always talk about Southern hospitality. I just love shows that kind of capture people at the beginning of their all getting to know each other without being, it's almost like, you know, you're on a TV show, but we're not seeing like pre-produced kind of people. You guys are just right. being yourselves. And that part to me is so refreshing after watching people on shows, you know, after season seven, eight, nine. So Hulu has done such a great job. It's also shot beautifully. My husband is a camera operator in reality TV. And he was like, this is really well done. Like just in terms of the visual aesthetics of it and just how beautiful the location Fine. is. Yeah. Did you guys get I would to meet always yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I would always I would always peek behind the camera sometimes and I'd look and I'd be like, Oh my god, I look unreal. <laughs> like like behind it. I'm like, wait, put me put me in the camera again. <laughs> I know. You guys it look really I mean it's looks awesome. It's like so cinematic. And then mm. did you guys get to hang out with Ken at all? Is Ken real? We see like a real person. Really, I okay. I gotta say, everybody always asks me, "What it's like? What's it like knowing Lisa? What's it like working with Lisa?" But I've always reverted back to Ken. I'm like, Lisa's amazing. <laughs> I'm a super fan. But now that I know Ken, Ken's like my favorite. Ken is just hilarious. He likes to sneak up behind me and scare me when he gets the chance. It's it's great. <laughs> he's he's so cute. He's really sweet, and he's like witty. Yeah. He's just him and Lisa are similar in that way. Super witty and and kind. Well, I think that the show is just gold and it's only going to get better. I know that episode four, you start to really delve into a lot of issues and see like different layers. And I know how these things work. By the end of the season, we're going to be like, give us more, give us more. So the show airs for anyone that is curious. It airs on Hulu on Sunday nights, right? Is when they release the new episodes each week now. Uh, 9 Midnight. Or Pacific Standard Time. 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And um, and so you can catch up on all four episodes that are already out there. And you guys, I'm going to put Gabriella's and Steven's Instagram accounts in my um, in the show notes later. But make sure to follow them and say hi. They're both so kind and so sweet. And um, I can't wait to just keep following you. Any last words before you guys, you know, go off and experience the eclipse? Have courage and be kind. Oh, I love that. That's his little saying. Um, That's so sweet. No, I, I'm just, I'm just excited for everyone to see all of this unfold. And you know, I know that Lisa's worked so hard on it. So thank you for everyone for tuning in and supporting us. You guys are so cute. If I go to Vegas or Miami, I'm hitting you both up. Oh my God. Don't you worry. Come, come, come to the playground. Miami, so. Yay! Yay! <laughs> okay, bye. You guys have a great one. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Oh, they are so sweet. I love that. I love when I get to meet um, reality stars that actually are kind and like real and they were so just friendly and nice. So welcome back to the show for those of you guys that uh, are skipping ahead. Maybe you don't want anything to be spoiled or anything on Vanderpump Villa, but make sure to watch Vanderpump Villa, you guys. That is a great show. But for those of you that are here, we're going to continue to do a typical Monday Daily Dose of Donna. I'm so um, happy to be here and we have stuff we want to talk about in addition to everything else. So really quickly, I just want to shout out Dr. Motion Socks. This next story is brought to you by Dr. Motion Socks. I've been talking about them for the last few weeks. Compression socks. If you are in a situation where you have circulation issues, diabetes, any sort of if you're an elderly person, if you're traveling a lot, you need to make sure that your circulation stays on point. And if you want to like reduce sweating, if you want a gusseted crotch, you know how I always like to say that, um, I am going to make sure that you guys go check out DrMotionSocks.com. It has all kinds of new spring and summer styles. Go check them out and buy your socks. Buy your socks. All right, let's talk about our next story. Just Josh says, this is the quietest I've ever seen the chat. You know, everyone's watching the eclipse. Of course, I know, I know. But you know what? I have a window here in Los Angeles and I don't believe Los Angeles has, no, I'm pretty, I'm like 99% sure. It doesn't have totality in terms of its eclipse, meaning it doesn't get completely dark. But it didn't get even a little dark. Like from, I was, I was just looking out. I'm like, it just, it looked like maybe a cloud coverage. Did you guys feel like where you are? Tell me where you are in the comments and did you get complete 
darkness is what I want to know. And I don't even have my solar sun, you know, sunglasses. So I couldn't even look outside if I wanted to. All right, let's keep it moving. You guys, we have to talk about, where do I even start? Okay. Let's talk about Real Housewives of Potomac for just a few minutes. So I was wrong. There's three freaking parts to this reunion. Did I think it needed three parts? Absolutely. freaking lutely I thought it was completely not necessary because here's the thing about Real Housewives of, Real Housewives of Potomac. They just don't have that much to cover. It's just not, this season just did not do, I don't think, what we wanted it to do. But of course, now knowing, and we've talked about this before, knowing that Candace and Robin are both not on the show and so much of the episode focused on this drama between the two of them, it kind of feels a little bit like pointless. It's like, okay, who cares? The reason why Candace and Robin are both not on the show, I don't know the actual full reason, but here's my guess. It's impossible to keep a show going when you don't have or keep people on a cast when you literally don't have a potential of them ever getting it to work. They were going to constantly fight. They were going to constantly create drama. This is giving Teresa and Melissa. And even Andy Cohen said, you know, the way that they shot Real Houses in New Jersey this season where they basically separated Teresa and Melissa, that is not going to be able to be sustainable in future seasons. So, you know, I think that they did what they could do with Robin and Candace, but just watching yesterday's reunion, it just makes me think they're both so stubborn in their ways. They're both so kind of like stuck in their ways that I just didn't feel like Robin and and Candace will ever be able to kind of move past that. You can throw Giselle into that mix with, with Candace as well. And it just kind of, it's like, it goes to a dead end. It gets boring. Um, a couple of things that I thought were pretty interesting. Giselle had a big episode where she talked a lot about her relationship with Jason. Jason, um, Oh, okay. Laura says, I'm back. The totality was insane. It's morning again. So we got really dark where you were. That's pretty cool. So, um, and I know that you're in Texas. I'm pretty sure you're in Houston or where you, Dallas or, or Houston. Okay. So Giselle had a pretty interesting episode. She was talking with Jason. Um, she was talking about her relationship with Jason, Jason, former summer house cast member, and he's a lot younger than her. And I thought this was interesting no one's really kind of announced like, oh, they're boyfriend and girlfriend. They're not in a real serious relationship. We didn't really know. But then we find out through yesterday's episode that it's kind of like a don't ask, don't tell policy with the two of them in terms of if they're hooking up with other people. Apparently she's hooking up with other people and apparently he's hooking up with other people. Like it's so strange. Like he was, you know, captured kissing other girls and she's like, it's okay. I don't care. As long as it's not in front of my eyeballs, I don't care. Hmm. Interesting. Now, secondly, we had a long conversation about her and her dad. And her dad passed away right after they fin finished um, taping the show. And he has been on the show multiple times over the last few years. And so that was definitely an emotional moment. Even so that Candace got emotional and cried and you know that that's a big deal because, you know, she hates Giselle. <laughs> so it was interesting that that hit her. Um, let's talk about Mia, Gordon, and Jeremiah. This is the strangest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So Mia's – Mia has a son, Jeremiah. And allegedly, Ink, Mia's boyfriend, this rapper DJ, Ink, Mr. Ink, thinks he's Jeremiah's dad. Well, he's not Jeremiah's dad. It's like a done deal. It's pretty much a done deal that he's not Jeremiah's dad because she had IUI, meaning she knows where she was in, like which sperm she was inserted with. Why she's just like allowing this man to walk around thinking he's this kid's dad. Why Gordon is okay with Mr. Ink because we saw them FaceTime and be like, hey, hey, Ink. Hey, Gordon, you're looking good. This is a relationship I cannot wrap my head around. Also, the fact that Gordon is not, you know, uh, or is just ex accepting the fact that Mia is going on these shows saying like, Gordon has no money. Gordon doesn't pay for anything. I pay for Gordon. And Gordon comes on as some of the husbands do. Of course, not Juan because 
where in the world is Juan Dixon is the question. But then Gordon comes on and he's like, yeah, well, I'm here to support Mia. Very confused. You're supporting your wife, ex-wife, soon to be ex-wife, who is currently in another relationship with a man who thinks he's your son's dad, who is out loud talking about the fact that you have no money, that she can't continue to pay for you, and that you are in legality issues with like your apartment because you can't pay rent. And he's like, I'm here to support her. I don't know about you guys, but the like the word whipped comes to mind, but he's also not getting anything out of that. You know what I mean? He's not getting that like, he's not getting laid by her or anything. So it's like, just, it's so strange. Interesting. I wonder if she does know stuff about him because it feels very, very odd for him to be just in full support of her with everything bad that's happening. Um. Okay. That was pretty much it. I mean, there was a whole conversation about colorism and calling someone a colorist. And I just can't go there because I just don't like any of those conversations. They upset me a little bit. I think they're not necessary. But Candace loves to stir the pot with that one. She loves talking about color of people's skin all the time. Let's move on to Tori Spelling. Tori Spelling finally released episode two of her new podcast, Misspelling. And I am telling you, I feel um, very interested with the fact that it opened up with this story. The first episode ended with her talking about the fact that they got into a huge fight because he said, I've had to clean up um, Tory Spelling shit for eight years, something like a comment like that, something along those lines. Well, she comes back and starts the episode by saying that she let out what she can only consider a guttural, like demonic scream, right? Screamed and then smashed her loaded baked potato. I think it was from Wendy's. Smashed it. And this is, she was like, this is my prized possession, my baked potato. Um, smashed it and a guttural scream ca came out of me. It wasn't even a sexy scream like running in a horror film. It was beast-like. It wasn't pretty at all. Now, later that night, she says, Dean McDermott went on his Instagram and released a story or a post saying something along the lines of, um, you know, after so many years, Tori Spelling and I are divorcing or separating or whatever. She had not, he had not had that conversation um, with her, like this was not a, a mutual conversation. This is something he had with himself after he got mad at her smashing the the big potato. And he he came in, he said, I want a divorce. And then he just went on and said it. It is with great sadness and a very, very heavy heart that after 18 years together and five amazing children, the Tory Spelling and I have decided to go our separate ways and start a new journey of our own. She finds out because Stella, their daughter, finds out on social media. Hey, mom, dad just announced that we're getting a divorce. You guys are getting a divorce. And she was like, what? He finally released it or pulled it from his socials at um, like 11 a.m. the next morning. And then eventually she felt free and she was able to go on and, you know, go through the separation. She said that he's been, he went to a rehab and he's been sober since June of 2023. She's very proud of him and so on and so forth. So it is so filling for me or um, not filling. It is so fitting. It is so fitting for me that Tori Spelling and her relationship has ended, her marriage ended with the smashing of a baked potato. Like, is there anything that makes more sense? Now, I'm still very deep into my true Tory binge. I'm about three or four episodes into season one. I am devastated because I can't find season two anywhere. But actually, I have an insider source on in my text messages, a friend of mine who is on season one and season two. So we will have to definitely, definitely watch that um, and learn from that because I've got some good stories for you guys. Um, okay. Another story. Let's talk about, let's talk about Shannon and Tamara. They were caught fighting in London 
We don't see video. They're there on a cast trip. We heard it on audio. And what we heard was Shannon yelling at Tamara, you get too drunk and you say horrible things and then you have to apologize the next day. Listen, I am no Shannon Stan at all, but it's got to be tough for Shannon to go into this season knowing that her and Tamara's relationship is completely over, knowing that Tamara has like befriended Alexis Bellino and has posted all these things with Alexis Bellino in the last few months. And Alexis is, of course, dating John Dirty, Jan- Dot- Dirty John Jansen. So it makes me wonder if, you know, I do kind of feel for Shannon. I do. Shannon's had a horrible year. <laughs> Hopefully this eclipse turns things around for Shannon. I don't know. I don't know. I'd be interested to see what happens. Will we be watching season 18 of Real Housewives? Uh, duh. Like, will will we ever miss an OC season? Well, I actually did miss one OC season because I just couldn't do it. Yeah, so I'm seeing in the news right now that there's so many, yeah, to- in Texas, it hit total totality, whatever that means, total totality. There's a lot of eclipse news all over the place. Now, the question is, are we going to see any changes in the world with this eclipse? Is the eclipse going to change anything in terms of, are Jackson and Brittany going to get back together? Are Jeff Lewis and Julie and Brandy going to become friends? Are, um, let's keep thinking of something else that could happen. Are Teresa and Melissa going to be friends again? Is Monica going to come back on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? Like, there's so many questions I have. Anyway, you guys, make sure to go listen to um, my Patreon Patreon from yesterday because I talked about my real thoughts on Julian Brandy and Jeff Lewis and all of that. And then I also talked about, I talked about Jill Zarin and you would be surprised about my thoughts on her on Below Deck. Mm Mm-hmm and so on and so forth. So make sure to jump in there, subscribe, check it out. You can do it for a year or just a month. It's a really fun way to kind of get more content. And I released, like I said, a video vlog on there yesterday. And then I'll be back tomorrow here on YouTube. And then of course, in the audio episode, thank you, Stephen and Gabriella for being here. Appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. And talk to you tomorrow, dosers. Bye.